uh, working on it. So with my friends, all all of them here, uh, the ones. Uh, okay, okay. Can I can I get you guys to understand? Everybody knows that this one is for dwellings, feeders, and brands, feeders and services. Everybody can thumbs up, Chad. Yep. Cool. Okay. Now I want you to understand the following here. If you the first section here is the number of the step, the step number. The second section right in here is is the category of the load. There are lighting, there are receptacles, there are HVAC equipment, there are a bunch of other things. Okay. Then can you guys see what it says MP? Everybody can see the MP. That MP is actually your meet main panel or meter center. That will give you the size for your meter center. Okay. If you look right underneath it here, it says AP apartment one, two, three, and four. We have four apartments. Now, do you guys think we're going to do a calculation for each one of them? That's one way. The engineering way is you really want to end up with one apartment 110 amps, another apartment 100 amps. Does it, is it, does it sound good? So what we do, guys, in a situation like this is we take the largest apartment. Can I have thumbs up? The largest square foot apartment. And we apply this one to all the other apartments. Why? Because we're not going to be splitting hair here. Technically, you're supposed to do it for each or and every one apartment. By the way, if you do it, you're going to end up very close. So what we do is we group all the apartments together. We choose the one largest apartment and we do the calculation for that one. Whatever we come up with, we apply it for the all the other apartments. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? Why we group them A, B, C, uh, one, two, three together? Okay, now house panel, HP is your house panel. So any calculation under the HP will be only for what? The housing panel. So can I have thumbs up that there? In reality, we're doing three calculations. We're doing a calculation for the service entrance, that will be the MP. And we're doing a calculation for all the apartment panels, and that will be the feeders. And as, as one, all lump sum as the largest one. And we're doing one calculation for the house panel. Can I have everybody understand what this sheet is doing all in one? Okay, now let's go do the calculation. Step number one, if you guys, you went to 220.12, right? The section and the table. If you go to 220.12 until you have to multiply the square foot by what? Three, everybody's okay with this? Here's my square foot, please verify. It's 4,000 amp, please verify the square foot of the apart building. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go to CAD, type area. You guys know how to find the area? Type area. And then pick the corners of the building, and it will actually in CAD gives you in square foot the area of your build, uh, the apartment. So do the upper floor and multiply it by what? Two. Do not split hair. When we do calculation, guys, as engineers, don't split hair. The code says the habitable space, so closets and blah blah blah, something you have to exclude it. We're not going to split hair here. Just take the square foot of the whole building, and that will be the square foot multiplied by two. And that will be right. That will be the, the square foot of the whole building. When it comes to the apartment, so look at this number here. This number is basically taking the um, the four thousand, multiplying it, the four thousand multiplying by three, in in um, in Excel. Can I have thumbs up, chair? We go, we go, get that one. Now this is for the main apartment, for the main panel. Now when you go to the apartment, do you? When you go to the apartment, you have to take the square foot of that particular apartment, which we decided to use what? The largest one. So suppose, and you guys are going to verify these numbers. Suppose the largest apartment was 2,000. Multiply this one by, can you guys see how we multiply them right here at the top? This is multiplied by three. Why three? Three volt amp per square foot. And that will get you 6,000. Now, I did, you guys are going to do the HP. I left it open. You're going to do the same thing for the HP. So for the HP, let me show you if you want to do it, for those of you who don't do CAD. Here's what I would do. I come here and I make VA, very simple. And suppose that the square foot of the apartment, the common place. Oh, what's the common place in the apartment? When you take the common place, guys, as the stairways and the utility room and so forth, let's just say it was uh, 600. Here's the 600. And then I need then, you when you want to do math, for those of you who don't know, you hit equal. Then click on this cell. This means multiply this cell equal this cell multiplied by what? And then hit this symbol here. That will give you multiplied. And I want to multiply by what? Three. And hit three and enter. So if the common space 
was 600 square foot. You guys are going to verify this. And then I'm going to multiply it by 3. Why 3? Because 3 volt ampere square foot for all the common spaces. And that will get me what? That will get me an 1800 volt amp. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We know exactly how to do that. Cool. That's, not, that's for what? The lighting. For dwelling only, for dwelling only, the lighting also include the convenient receptacles. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? The code says, for dwelling only, the 3 volt amp are included for all the lights in the apartment, in the apartment building, as well as all the convenient receptacles. All the receptacles are included with some exception. Okay, so somebody's going to say, where the receptacle, Chad? In dwelling, it's included. In a commercial building, it's not included. We're going to assign 180 volt amp per square foot, 100 volt, 180, 180 volt amp for every receptacle in a commercial building. We're residential. What happened to all the receptacles? They are included. Okay, in the three volt amp. Okay, so let's go do it. So any, any comments, guys, about step number one? So my expectation from you guys is to go um, copy this one, put it in an Excel and do the math and format it like this or better. I don't want to force you to use this format. By the way, I did I did uh, grid it here. What do you call this? Uh, the lines just to make sure that you know where the cell is. Everybody's familiar with Excel, right? There and you guys are, let me know if you guys are not familiar with Excel. Excel, if you want to do math in Excel, you have to pick a cell first. You can't do math and type in the same cell. Everybody knows that? So if I want to do math like I did here, if I want to do math in this cell, I can't type and do math at the same time. So pick the cell, hit equal. Every time you're going to do math, you're going to hit equal. I put equal. What do you want to do, Chad? Equal what? This cell equal what? Okay, equal this cell. So now it picked it, 7H7. Can you guys see that? Now what do you want to do, Chad? Okay, I want to multiply this cell. Now this cell by any any other cell. Okay, let's go take this cell by and multiply it by this cell. So two cells multiply by each other and hit enter. Doesn't mean anything. Okay. So here's uh, here's my multiplication um, of these two cells together. You can see it's uh, 4.8, 10. They put it in a format weird, which is 4.8 raised to the power 10 times 7 because the numbers are so big. Um, uh, made a mistake? No problem. Delete. Every time you delete a cell, a math cell, the math in it is deleted. Okay? All right. As you guys go through, I can help you. Everybody's good with uh, with Excel for the most part, for the simple things. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? Okay. All right. So, any question about step number one? So, step number one, you're going to do it for, for the main panel as well as for every apartment. Okay. Let me show you the outcome, by the way because I like always to start at the end. Why are we doing this? If you step, if you go all the way down, here's why we're doing it, guys. At the bottom line, I need to size the ungrounded step 18. I need to size the ungrounded conductor, the conductor that's coming to this building, and I need to find the amp size of this building. That's what the bottom line is. Um, and the same thing for apartment one, for the apartments, as well as for what? For the common. And I'm not sizing it because you guys are going to come up with it. That's what we're doing, to come up with the over temperature device for every apartment and the feeder that's going to the whole building. Everybody knows what the outcome is? So starting from the end. Okay, so but to do that, we have to do the steps. Okay, step number three. I'm not going to go to these articles, guys. You're going to go verify them. 210.11C1 and 220.52A, it will tell you you need minimum for dwelling, minimum of two small appliances circuits. And you have to multiply them by each small appliance circuit. You have to multiply it by um, 150. Now, for the whole, of looking at the whole apartments, how many minimum? We're going to size based on the minimum. How many small appliance circuits for the whole apart the apartment building? Eight. Why eight? Two per apartment. Two times four is eight. So you take, you multiply the eight by, can you guys see where the two cells, this cell, multiplied by 1500. Why 1500? The code says 1500. So that's where you get this number. Now you move into the apartment. Why do you think we have two here under the apartment? Each apartment is going to only see what? Two. Each apartment panel is going to see two. Two multiplied by 1,500 will give you this. Now what do you guys expect to be under this? The home panel. Is there any kitchens fit from the house panel? No. So what I would do, I put zero here. 
And if I want to put equal, zero, just to be consistent, multiply it by 1500. Enter. What do you think you're going to get? And I put my volt amp. So what do you get under the apartment building? Zero. Why? Because there are no kitchens fit from the house panel. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? Okay. All right. So that's for the kitchen. Moving on to the laundry circuit. The code 210.11C2, it says you have to have a branch circuit for the, for the laundry. If you guys go to 220.52B, it tells you that branch circuit, you have to allocate 1500 volt amp. I trust Aaron, my friend, that you guys are going to go there. <clears throat> I'm going to verify this information. I really don't have time to go verify it. You're going to verify this, right? Make sure the code articles are right and make sure it says what it says here. So first you need a branch circuit. Second, every branch circuit, you have to give it what? 100, uh, 1500 volt amp. Okay. So how many branch circuits for the laundry do we have? Now, remember, for the apartment building, the apartments did not have a laundry. We have a common laundry. Now, that's where you're going to use your judgment. So I did two circuits. Why did I do two circuits? Remember we had two dryer, two washing machines there? So I assigned a circuit for every washing machine. So I put two here, multiply 1500, they'll give me three. Now, when you go, now look at that. When we go to the apartment, under the apartment, is there any laundry fit from the apartment? No. So you're going to allocate what? Zero, and you're going to multiply it by 1500, get you zero. Now, when you go to the common panel are there laundry coming from the panel coming panel yep two and you're going to do the math equal to multiplied by um multiplied by 1500 and enter under the common panel and i'm going to put volt amp under the common panel i'm going to have actually 3000 volt amp under the common panel and the main panel because under this is one of the most confusing for the students do you understand why certain loads are seen under certain things, not under the others? If the load is not fit from that panel, when you do the calculation, that load should not be under that panel, period. Laundry circuits is not fit from the apartment panel. So should I add it to the apartment panel? Any apartment panel? No, it's fit from the house, goes under the house. But here's the fun thing, and I know you guys are familiar with this. This one here, the main panel is going to see everything. Can I have thumbs up, guys? The main panel is going to see everything. The apartment and the house panel is going to see only what's fit from them. So as you go through the loads, you're going to ask yourself, where did I feed this um, uh, air conditioning or water, uh, water heaters? All these loads, you have to assign it to the panel that you fit it from when you calculate the load. Cool? Any question, guys, about this? Okay, so now we... Then, if you guys look at this step, that step is add them up. Step general lighting, small appliances and laundry. This is just, can you guys see how added this number to this number to this number? Add it up. Cool. You made a mistake on it. You're gonna, everybody knows how to add. Either you you put e, always put equal. Equal cell 1 plus cell 2 plus cell 3. Or, if they're all in one order, you put sum equal sum S-U-M and open brackets. And, like, if I want to do... Uh, I'm going to change this one. Here's what I can do. I say sum, S, M, open the brackets here. Now I'm going to, I'm going to make it this cell all the way. Anything in these cells, I want them added. Enter. So if I put here uh, three and here uh, four and here seven, see, can you see how it's add anything in these cells? And I apologize if I'm going too deep on, on, on some of you guys. But either you use sum, see how it's summed it all together. Or the alternative, I don't like some, say, not a whole, we use some if they're all, a lot of things right underneath each other. That's an easy way to do it. If they're just one at a time, hit equal then. Equal what, Chad? Equal this, and hit plus this, plus this, plus this, plus this. And at the last thing you need to do is what? Hit enter. And I'm doing this for only for the guys who have not done have not done uh, visual um, Excel with us. <laughs> cool. And I have thumbs up chat. We know the basic things to do it. Okay, I'm going to go delete these because it doesn't make much sense here. Uh, and I'm going to get this one deleted. Okay, so we added them up. Then if you guys go to number step number six, it says net computed general light 
the code allows you to add all these up and apply a demand factor for them. Why did I do it this way? Because if you go to Article 220.42 and Table 220.42, it will tell you add all these types of loads and apply a demand factor from the table that you guys were looking at. It. Okay, there you go. Look what, what's going to happen. Now, this is where you're going to be very creative, guys. You're going to take, um, see this, this, can you guys see this cell is actually taking this cell and then subtract 3,000 from it. And that will get you, this is, the first cell is just the 3,000 that we did. Okay, the second cell, this one here, see how they're subtracting them? Can you guys see how they're subtracting these two from each other? Then taking the div the subtraction here, multiplying it by 0 .5, 0 0.35 and finding this cell. Any question about how they came up with these two numbers? The first 3,000 leave them alone. Anything higher than 3,000, what do you do? Cut them by 35%. Unless your overall load therein is what? Higher than 120. Is, our, is my overall load higher than 120,000? No, way below. Then you have two, only two steps. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand how to do that. Okay, now this is where, and anything, it, by the way, anything in red means it has to be, it's already derated and I can carry it all the way through. Okay, so that's, um, you can do the same thing here, guys. Now the same thing, you're gonna do it right here, but this time you're gonna do it for this part. So it's, you, you're doing the calculation three times, basically. First, you do it for the part, for the main, and then you do it for the apartment and the comment. Okay, let's go to step number. Any question about step number six? Seven. Seven ranges. How many ranges do I have and what the size is? I'm giving you a size 8KW. How many of them do I have? Four. So what do you do? You multiply the four times eight, and you multiply it by 0.5. Where did the 0.5 came to be? If you guys go to uh, two. 220.55, I hope it's giving you a 0.5, 220.55 for four of them under which column? B. Column B, what's the, the multiplier? 50%, that's where the 0.5 came to be. And that's your derating for all your ranges. That's it, anything in red, it's already done. We're gonna just carry it all the way through. All right, let's go to the electrical dryers. If you guys go, electrical dryers are weirdos, the code, 220.54 article say the following, Aaron. If your dryer is less than 5K, make it 5K. If it's more than 5K, leave it as is. Less than 5K, make it 5K. I think our dryers were 5K, where our dryers 5 By the way, where, where did I get all these loads? Right here. Where did I get my loads? There you go. You have your loads in page 10 here, guys. So if I have, if I'm looking, my ranges is eight, my water heater, uh, my dryers, my dryers are 5K. 5K, then leave them alone. List them five, what do you do with them? Make them five. Okay, how many of them do I have? Two. So two times five times one. One, you don't derate them. So basically leave them as is. There's no derating for two dryers, right? No derating. Had they been more than four, from table 220 to 54, you do it. Can I get you guys to understand? It's not enough just to do the math here. You have to go to the table and and and, and apply the table. So the table 220 to 54 tells you the derating factor is one, meaning you're not going to derate. Any question about step number eight? All right, let's go step number nine. Electric furnace and air conditioning or heat pump. These guys are the non-coincidental loads the heat and the cool is highly unlikely that's going to be on at the same time so i want to remind you for the heat i have uh, for the air conditioning i have four thousand four k right from this list i have four of them and if you go to article 440 it tells you um and actually article 220 220.51 it will tell you as is don't do it so that's why I took the 4K multiplied by 4 equals 16 KVA as is, no derating. Cool. The heat. Do you guys remember the heaters, the baseboard heaters that we have? Uh, Comments there with heaters, 3K each. So I took three of them, three times th uh, 3K give you 9K. 
So which one of them is the largest? You choose the largest, nine or six. Which one is, of them is the largest? 16, that's why 16 was picked up. Can you see it says enter the largest uh, based on 220.60. Why? Because it's the non-coincidental load. Everybody here, the non-coincidental loads or nobody? If two loads are not running at the same time, you pick the largest and you size based on the largest. Thumbs up, Chad? Cool. All right, so that's what red is here. All right, then, then we add them all up, guys. Step uh, seven, all of them are up. So I'm up to 53 kV. Can you guys see it? Right here, 53 kV. Then I go to step 11. I have listed fasting in place appliances. Anything listed fasting in place appliances. Who's trying to get in touch with me? That bad. Sorry, I'm always worried about the. This is my kid's school. Okay, water heater is uh, fixed in place, dishwasher, food disposal, microwave. Now, if you guys look at other books, Darren, they might add the uh, garage door opener. You know, these are small loads, so don't sweat it too hard. You either I tend to put certain loads under motors and other loads under fasten in place. So water heater, definitely appliances, dishwasher, definitely appliances, food water and appliances, microwave and appliances. Garage door opener, I technically put it under motors because it's a motor. Uh, some pump under motors. Okay, so is it wrong if you put it here? No. Bottom line, guys, you're talking about peanuts here. Nothing. Okay, so if you add them all up, guys, these are these values are coming from here. Everybody can see that? So you add them all up, multiply, how many, why do you think we have four? Because we have four of them. Now, when I go under the apartments right here, why do you think this is, when you guys go under apartments, which is in this area, it's, you're going to be multiplying by one because only one in each apartment. Can I get you guys to understand the different calculation under the main four, under one of them, when you do the calculation right here, it's going to be only one of them, right? Here's five. These are only one of them. Okay, then you add them up, and then based on the code, 220.53 tells you you have to apply the rating factor of 75% if you have more, if four or more. Do I have four or more? Yep, Chad, I have uh, four, 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 four times four is what? 16 of them. So you apply, so you multiply this number by this number to get this number. Can you have thumbs up, Chad? We understand that, how that goes. That's fastened in place. Now, total connected load for the small fastened in place appliances, it's going to be basically these two numbers, uh, which is lighting small. This is just adding everything all up to this point. Give you uh, 79. We go to motors. Under motors, guys, I have 220.50. It tells you a name plate for motors. I have sump pump, laundry, bathroom, pool pump, garage door opener, and furnace. I add them all up, and I add 25% on the fattest, fluffiest motor. Can you guys see that? The fattest, fluffiest motor. Um, this is where I use max. Can you guys see where max? Look at the function max. Max, it says, look at all these. Pick the largest motor out of all these and throw 25 percent on it the code says guys if you have motors you take them full load value all of them except the largest fattest one you add 25 percent on it so how do you do that here's i added them all up here can you see how i added all of them then i took the fattest how do you take the fattest if you click this it says just put max between brackets max any number look at these numbers pick the maximum the maximum is the largest, right? And throw 25% of that, and that will get you this amount, and then add them up. Can you see, add the largest, 25% on the largest, plus all the sum of all of them. Cool? All right, so that's how we get the motors. Can I have thumbs up, Chad? If you guys understand it now, guess what? That's what we're gonna do for the commercial and the industrial. Cool? All right, so let's go to the, I now, I have other loads. This apartment has other loads. I have pool heaters. Pool heaters, guys, I have 4 kV right here for a pool heater. Pool heaters heating are 100%. Uh, uh, do you guys think the pool heater is non-coincidental load with the, key, with the cooling? Could you be heating the pool, swimming pool, at the same time doing an air conditioning in the house? 
could heating the water a swimming pool heating is not building heating so that's you add it as is that's why I separate it so here's your four multiplied by one equal four no derating add them all up when you add all these steps up here's what you get now this is your final final addition of all these steps you have a hundred kW cool now what's the voltage system 240 so you're going to divide the 100 kW over 240 you're going to end up with 417 417 amps what 417 amps from 240.6 give you a 450 amp over temperature device so we size it based on over temperature device cool 450 and that's basically the size of your main panel you guys might end up with a 500 but you're going to be hovering between 400 and 500, basically, all your calculation. Cool. Now, the same thing you're going to come over here. I didn't do it. You're going to do it for every apartments. You're going to pull this information and do it under every apartments. Cool. And then at the end here, uh, minimum, um, uh, okay, minimum ungrounded, you're going to end up here with a size of a panel whatever you come up with you can't go less than 100 anyway and the main pan the house panel as well as the apartment panels any questions any comments about this okay so that's your minimum ungrounded conductor then 17 guys is doing the <clears throat> neutral 17 is doing the same calculation almost identical calculation for the neutral can I understand that, guys, up to step number 16, you are done. You're really done with sizing the panel, the panels as well as the main. 17, because the neutral is not carrying, is only carrying the unbalanced, we have to derate it. So if you guys look at the neutral. Um, so let's go to the neutral. So I have line 6D, nothing. Under line 7B, these are line 7, uh, seven guys, that's for the um, ranges. For the ranges, the code says, for 220.61b, the code says, cut them by 75%. Or is it 70%? 75%. Okay, so that's why we, we, we use them. Then we go to the dryers, the same thing for the dryers, 75%, we add them. So including then, so you base, then these are the dryers and the range, you add them at 75%. 70. 70, see, that's, I, I lied to you. Okay, thank you. Seven, that's what I thought, this doesn't sound right. Can you guys add, change this one? Everybody can change these two numbers into 70, please. You guys should verify that one. From 220.61b, it will tell you 70. That sounded wrong. Yeah. Okay? Then, any load, Darren, any load, 240, when we size the neutral, what do you do? Open the window, grab it, and throw it out. Except the range and the dryer, add them at 70%. Okay, so here's what we did. Then, um, line 11 include 120 loads only. Here's 120 loads only, 700. Uh, water heaters, the water heaters, um, dishwashers, water heater. Look at the water heater. The water heater is 240, so we'll put zero for it. Uh, garbage disposal, anything 240, zero it. And then you do the same small fast and in place appliances, add them at 75%, only on the what? You're doing the same calculation, guys, except for the 120 loads only. You go to the motors, the same thing. Anything 240, what do you do? Open the window, throw it out. And then you're going to do the same calculation for 120 only. Add 25% on it. Then add them all up. Here's your total. Divide them by why? Here's the most confusing one. Why, if we're calculating the neutral, we divide by 240? Anybody can answer that? We're calculating the neutral. Why do we divide by 240? Not the hots. Remember, there are two new, there are new, there are two hots. So the neutral is going to be divided between what? Hot one and a neutral, and hot two and a neutral. That's why we divide by 240, not 120. A lot of people guys say, well, Chad, it's neutral load. Why do we divide by not 120? Because the neutral load will be will be will be balanced between the two hots. Hot one and a neutral and hot two and neutral. Okay, so you're gonna end up guys with 222 amp neutral load. So that's why you go size your neutral based on this amps. So your neutral is gonna be smaller. 
Okay, so that's your, so your, then you size your number 18, size ungrounded conductor, and number 19, size the neutral conductor. I want to remind you for neutral conductor, guys, the code says, and we'll, I'll emphasize this a lot as we move on. The code says for no matter what your neutral conductor come up with, it can't be less than the main bonding jumper and the system bonding jumper. The main bonding jumper and the system bonding jumper. No matter what you come up with, 90% of the time we don't have a problem. Only 10% of the time you end up with a main bonding jumper 4 out and a neutral of 1 out. So what do you need to do? Make the neutral 4 out. So please read this. Read this. This is where it tells you all this junk stuff. Um, 220.122, um, so 250.24C1, I believe, and 250.66, it tells you that the neutral cannot be smaller than the main bonding jumper and the grounding electrode conductor. Okay, so when you do there, then you have to go size the grounding electrode conductor for me based on 250.66. Then you have to size the race width. I don't know if you guys want to do the calculation here to size the raceway. This is just raceway calculation sizing. Um, I'm okay with just sizing the calculation, find the conduit they're going to be using. We're using THHW, THHW for the for the main building, and for the feeders, we're going to be using THHF. So ultimately, out of all this mess, guys, that you're looking at, you're going to come up with two things. You're going to come up with the um, amp, rating and rating for every apartment amp and you're going to come up with a uh, conductor conductor size and you're going to come up with grounding electrode conductor size too size you're going to come up with neutral conductor size and you're going to come up with conduit size. That's ultimately, that's what we're doing. For what? You're going to come up for all these. You're going to come up for what? For, um, for uh, apartment panel. One, two, three, and four. They're going to be identical, right? And then you're going to do it for house panel. And you're going to do it for main panel. So you're going to size all these for the main panel, the house panel, and the apartment panel, one through four. Any question, guys? Is this good enough to get you up and running? I know there's a, if you guys that take this, as I said, did it work for you, copy all? No, you pretty much have to rebuild the whole thing. Yeah, do you shrink, shrink it down easier, and shrink it. Down, yeah, and it like all goes yeah. down to one side and it's all okay. out of nothing I mean, it's all out of order. Yeah. So the, I've never the reason why I give it to you guys in a PDF because I want you to build it. I really do. I want you to build one good one for you. If I give you an Excel, it really might as well just <laughs> you can plug the numbers and call it a day. The intention of, of this one is to build your own. But I know if I don't give you a map like this, it will be, would it be hard to build it without the map like this? Do you think it's going to be hard? It would take a while. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping the PDF, <clears throat> PDF file will get you a map how to build it. And with all, build it right with all the reference for the NEC code book. Now, you don't have to follow the format that I'm doing, but I want something similar. I want something very similar. I'm not hung up on putting uh, table 250.66 in this cell. Do you guys get, did you get what I'm saying? I'm not hung up with where things are going to be in the cells as long as you, I want to emphasize that you have to show it somewhere. Okay, does that make sense? So don't get hung up on where things are going to be located. If you come over here, <clears throat> for example, look at this one. <clears throat> if you can and you grab this number from here and put it right in here, as long as you identify it, I, I don't care. So, but what I need to know, if you guys look, I need the step, I need what the step is, I need the reference, and the calculation, and the calculation for each one of them. And of course, the, the reference is any secret book, because Jeff, as you and I know, I can tell you right now, I can tell you what the size is going to be before you start. It's going to be 100 amp. All of them are going to be 100 amp. 
the main panel is going to be 150 and most likely and uh, the apartment panel is going to be 450 or, or 500. I'm telling you before you even start that one because we've done it many times what you need to do is you need to justify it so when you burn the building and they send somebody like your friend Chad as a forensic expert to see what happened to and I'm not talking about this apartment a real project and say what what did you do to come up with uh, a 2000 amp switch gear well here's my steps step by step if you have this referenced by the code, your chances of winning a case is much higher. Then we'll say, well, the last project that we did was like this, so I put 2,000 amp. Does that make sense why we do what we do? Because ultimately, guys, we're dealing with legal stuff. You're engineers and, and designers. We're going to come up with a, <clears throat> a system that works. And if it doesn't work, it's a bad day. <clears throat> it is a bad day when it doesn't work. You're looking at this, I can tell you right now, give this to a contractor, I'll tell you 400, 100, move on, right? But that's ripping you to the commercial building. Residentially easy, because we've done it over and over. Now go to, let's go to a hospital. Can you give me the typical size for a hospital? How many panels are you gonna put in the hospital? How do you size the panels for the hospital? Government building downtown, stadiums. Do you guys see what this is ripping you to? It's not trying to make you work more than needed. So when you do this really good, if you do it guys good, you're gonna use it, the same sheet with, with I would say 20% modification for the two projects that's coming, for the commercial and industrial. But be aware, if you build it right, uh, you can use the same thing for the commercial industrial. Cool? <clears throat> any comments guys, any questions? <clears throat> So we did the same calculation here. I can't emphasize, guys, you're going to be doing the pulling things in. This is your uh, meter, meter <coughs> center. This one, your apartment, um, oops, apartment panel. And this one, your common. Panel. Any questions about what we need to do? In the past, Aaron, I used to ask the students to do it different sheets. It's it's a waste of, of paper. You can take this one and copy it three times and make one for each. Fine. But lately we start just doing a cell, right? Because you're pulling the information here. Can you guys see this is the information for the whole building? This is the information for the largest apartment. This is the information for the common space, area-wise, right? And then you, you keep doing the same thing. The creativity becomes, Joe, my friend, is what's fed from what? What's fed from what? So if I minimize this, um, and I want to take you guys back to where, why are we doing what we're doing, right? Take this, back to why are we doing what we're doing. This calculation will get you the size of the service, service interest conductor, the panel size, because you're gonna go to color hammer or square deal size there, and it's gonna give you the size of the feeders for each one of these panels, the size of the panels, is it 100 amp panel, 200 amp panel, and the size of a disconnect for each one of these panels. This is basically putting the whole system together. Any question, Brian, my friend? No? Any questions? So as we move guys through the commercial industrial, next project, we're gonna start here. We'll start with this. So just a quick reminder, um, I don't wanna lecture again on a Monday for you guys. Tomorrow, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this sheet on the board again, and I'm gonna walk you through an example just by hand. We'll do it step by step as an example. Um, through, all, through the whole thing, sizing it for the main panel, uh, sizing a main panel. Uh, step by step, because that's gonna be in your final. So you guys are required to do it also for the apartment building, the project, and it's gonna be for the rest of uh, the other projects that we did. Any comments, guys, any questions? Any comments, any questions?
Okay, that's all I have for you. Thank <sighs> you.